This is a brief demonstration showcasing the integration between Palo Alto Firewall and Cisco's Identity Services Engine for VPN with Global Protect, and SGT to IP address mapping, propagation, and enforcement on other Cisco devices. Before diving into the demo, let's take a look at the environment. In our lab environment, we have a Windows 7 host with Global Protect VPN agent installed. When a user establishes a VPN session with a Palo Alto firewall, the user will attempt to access resources in the data center with, on the web server with IP address of 172.16.10.150. The Palo Alto firewall is configured to send all radius authentication requests for VPN to Identity Services Engine. ICE is running version 2.6 patch 4. Based on the user identity that's provided in the authentication request, ICE has been configured in its authentication and authorization policies to assign a security group tag to that particular session. ICE will then share the, uh, the security group tag information with ASAV. The ASAV is configured in transparent mode, meaning it is operating in layer two only. It is bridging VLANs 10 and 110. So in this environment, the security group tags are defined on ICE. When a user authenticates, ICE is going to have the security group tag to IP address mapping. It's going to propagate that uh, the security group tag to IP address mapping to the ASAV, and the ASAV can then enforce based on the security group tag information. The ASAV is configured as an S SXP listener, and it's pointing to ICE to pull the CTS environment data. Some acronyms here, SXP stands for Security Exchange Protocol, and CTS is uh, Cisco TrustSec. So uh, SXP listener is what, how the ASAV will learn about the SGT to IP address mapping. The CTS environment data, or Cisco TrustSec, TrustSec data, is how the, the ASA knows of the security group tags that have been defined on ICE. My host here is sitting uh, at 192.168.15.100, which is on the same subnet as the outside interface of the Palo Alto firewall. When the VPN session is established, it will be assigned an IP address within the VPN pool of 172.16.100.0.24. First, we'll take a look at the Palo Alto firewall. On the Palo Alto, we have a radius server profile pointing to Cisco ICE. And under authentication profile, uh, it just I'm using the, uh, the, the, the radius server profile that I previously created for ICE. And it's with allow list of all. Now, when we go look at the, the Global Protect settings, they are pretty basic. Uh, we have a Global Protect portal that is pointing to a Cisco ICE for authentication. And we also have a Global Protect gateway assigned to the outside interface on the 15 network uh, authentication uh, pointing with, to Cisco ICE. Under the agents, configs here and client settings, you can see that my VPN pool is uh, something that wants to use 16100 subnet. And just in case you are wondering, this particular PA220 is running panOS 9.0.5. On the ASAV, Right. We'll just look at some of the uh, configuration here. We'll do show mode, show mode, show firewall. Yep. Show firewall shows that uh, this is in transparent mode. So on uh, this ASAV, there are three interfaces that are active. Uh, the first interface is the management interface, uh, interface two. So this is sitting in VLAN 10. And then this, uh, the third interface is sitting in VLAN 110. Okay. Show run, show run. Okay. 
So interfaces uh, GIG00 and GIG01, they belong to bridge group one. So with bridge group one, it's uh, in this uh, particular BVI, right? Looking at additional configs, we can see some of the AAA server commands here, as well as the Cisco TrustSec uh, SXP commands. So if right now, if I do a show CTS environment data, we can see that I have a successful connection uh, pulling information from Cisco ICE. And then if I do SG table, these are all of the security group tags or scale group, scalable group tags that have been defined on ICE. If I do a show CTS SXP connections, so um, this is SXP connections. Um, so uh, we have an active connection to Cisco ICE for that as well. SXP SGT map. And currently, there are no uh, IP to SGT mappings because we don't have any clients authenticated to Cisco ICE yet. Now, let's take a look at Cisco ICE. Wanted to show you here, uh, Cisco ICE is, is running uh, ICE 2.6, uh, patch 4. So go to uh, administration deployment. And under ICE, So I have one ICE node that's running a lot of services on here, uh, admin monitoring policy service, and I have the uh, SXP service uh, running on this particular node as well. Uh, the SXP is needed because that's what's gonna propagate the uh, SGT to IP address mapping to the ASAV for enforcement. Before we take a look at the policies, I'll just show you uh, the TrustSec area. So under TrustSec Components, uh, we can see these are the, uh, these are the security group tags that I've defined here within ICE. So if we go back to the, uh, to the ASA, right, and I do show CTS environment data SG table. So here are the same uh, security group tags that we see on ICE over here. Right. Also, uh, under the SXP area, you can see I have an, uh, I have an active connection uh, to the ASAV from ICE. Right? So whenever ICE learns about a device, that, device or user that has come onto the network and knows of, of the SGT to IP address mapping, it's going to send that information over to the ASAV. Uh, I look at all SXP all SXP mappings. Uh, we don't have any mappings currently. Taking a look at the policy sets. So we're going to focus on the VPN policy set here. And I'll take a look at the authorization policy. I've disabled all the other uh, VPN policies so that we can just focus on the three that we're working with here. So essentially what this is saying is if someone comes on, if someone comes and attempts to authenticate via Global Protect from the Palo Alto, right? And the username is a, is a valid user account from the Active Directory group belonging to professors, I'm going to allow access and assign the uh, security group tag of professors uh, to that particular uh, flow. If someone comes on with the student's username, then I'm going to assign a tag in the student's uh, security scalable group tag. If someone comes on as a doctor, then I'm going to assign it a security group tag of doctors. And if uh, there's no, if it's not a valid username or password, then they're going to be denied access. Pretty straightforward. So let's go to uh, Operation Radius Live Logs, and we will log in with our test host here. So I have a test host. If I go 
let's do a IP config, right? So this host is on the 192.168.15, so it's sitting in the same subnet as the outside interface of the Palo Alto. And I am going to bring up Global Protect and attempt to authenticate. All right, let's do that one. Go protect is connected. If I go to settings, I can see under connection, I, as a student one, I'm assigned an IP address in the VPN pool of 172.16.100.2. I'm gonna go into student one, the authentication details. We can see student one, username, IP address 172.16.100.2, uh, the security group tag, so ICE has uh, created the SGT to IP address mapping of uh, this particular user belong to, belonging to the security group tag of students at this IP address. If we go back to ICE and we go to Work Centers SXP, all, SX, all SXP mapping, we can see here's my mapping, 1761.2 students. Now let's go to the ASA because uh, the ASA is in this particular environment simulating a Cisco device that is going to apply enforcement based on this uh, security group. Under monitoring, identity by trust sec, we can see environment data, I have an active connection, these are all the SGTs that are defined at, on ICE. Under IP mapping, we can see here's the new mapping I just learned, students uh, 100.2. I go to the configuration and to my firewall policy. Here you can see I have some uh, policies predefined based on security groups. So essentially this is saying if a user belongs to this security group uh, trying to access my web server, whether they're gonna uh, be allowed access or not. So if someone's in the, in the students group, I'm gonna deny ICMP and deny IP. If someone belongs to a professor group, I'm gonna allow IP and ICMP and if someone's from a doctor's group, I'm gonna deny ICMP, but allow IP. I understand that ICMP is a subset of IP, but I figured we'll create some uh, different policies so it's easier to see with an ASDM. Let me just uh, clear my counters here. Make it easier to read. And do a refresh. Okay, so on my test host, again, I'm logged in as a student. Ten dot one fifty. I cannot ping. And let me bring up Google. Uh, I'm going to use incognito mode just because I'm going to be authenticating with different uh, VPN accounts. So we don't want to cache that session. So in incognito mode, uh, I attempt to access 172.16.10.150. And let's go back to... You can see here we're getting some hit counts. Uh, ICMP is denied and IP is denied because I'm logged in as a student. Here we can see the hit count is incremented, uh, four and seven. All right, so let me go back to my test host here, log out of student one. Now I'm gonna log in as a professor. Uh, if you recall, as a professor, I should have access to both ICMP as well as all IP to this particular web server. Okay, connected. And if I connection details, so as a professor, I have an IP address of 172.16.100.3. 
three. If I go to ice, we will look at the radius life logs. Here you can see uh, Professor One. Uh, that was my previous fat finger where I mistyped a password. But here are my valid authentication. Let me bring this up. Here you can see Professor One, 100.3 assigns a security group tag of professors. On ICE, if I go to Work Center, SXP, I'm just going to open up in the new tab. Take a little bit of refresh, but if I go to all SXP mapping, here you can see the new mapping I just learned, right? 100.3 professors it's right here. If I go to ASDM, under monitoring, you can see it just populated with professors of 172.16.100.3. If you recall, let's go back to my configuration, my access policy configuration here. As a professor, I have access, uh, permit access to both ICMP and IP. So from this particular host, Bring up my command prompt. Okay. It's first one timed out, but the second one, yep. So I have ICMP. If I again bring up an incognito window, you can see I now have access to the web page here. The okay, final example is someone from the doctors group. So if you recall from the doctors, I'm going to deny ICMP, but uh, permit IP. Right? Here you can see the previous accounts. When I was logged in as a professor. So I'm going to close down this incognito window. Disconnect. Connect again. Global Protect Authenticated. We'll go to Settings. Connection. Here you can see my IP is uh, 176.100.4, logging in as a doctor. If I go to ICE, hit refresh under radius live logs. Here we can see uh, Dr. One. And as a doctor, Dr. One, 116.100.4, uh, assigns a security group tag of doctors here. If I go to all SXP mappings, right, here you can see 100.4 is doctor. Right. So again, ICE is assigning SGT to IP address mapping and then propagating that to the ASAV. If we go to ASAV under monitoring, notice that doctor appeared, right? And now the ASAV is able to make a policy decision and enforce based on that tag. So in the configuration area, doctor, Deny ICMP, but permit IP. So I should not be able to ping, but I should be able to access the website. Because I'm logged in as a doctor, you can see ICMP is restricted. But if I open, yet again, another incognito window, I have access to the website. So I hope you found this brief demo helpful in terms of the integration between Palo Firewall and Cisco ICE, VPN via Global Protect, and being able to leverage uh, security group tags in that type of environment. Thank you.